Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Wee Knives Envisage, which is a, an EDC style karambit. In fact, this is the most normal karambit I have ever seen. Now, I, I understand the purpose of a karambit, and you know, if you're like well practiced in the art of the karambit, and you, you know, you fight other you fight like rival karambit clans like every day you're just like trying to go and get some corn at the freaking supermarket and you're like ah, i gotta fight all these guys good thing i got my crimp that's great if that's your life that's great that's not my life um my life is more like oh uh, you know here's a package i will use my pocket knife to open the package oh look at that that's another knife that's my life um, so I like, I like things that are a little bit like, I like, I like the design of things that are intense. Like for, for example, I, I, I appreciate like a, you know, almost ironically high quality karambit that has like a wild, you know, sort of like grim reaper scythe blade and all this crazy stuff on it. But it, instead of being made to the standards of what a gas station knife would be made to, it's, it's actually made, you know, ultra premium. I, I, I appreciate that, you know, for the design elements. Um, but when it comes to function, I kind of just like a normal, you know, a knife that's going to get me through the day. And when it comes to karambits, I, usually they're on the other side. Usually they're wild, right? They, they, uh, they look like something that's, that's meant to demolish a jean jacket, like just to absolutely shame a jean, a jean jacket and all of its protective qualities. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with that. This looks pretty docile, right? Um, I mean, it, literally, look at this. If I cover the ring up, it means, oh, 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 that's not so bad. Oh my gosh, it's a weapon, right? Um, that's, that's literally, uh, what it looks like to me. So anyways, um, you can buy this knife right now. It is available. I'll link it right down in the uh, description for you guys to check out. It does help my channel when you use those links before you buy something, but that's entirely up to you. Thanks to Wee Knives for sending this in. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and measure the thing. Um, so it's it's bigger and smaller, I think, than you might think. Does that make sense? No? Okay. Well, bear with me. Uh, overall length, it comes in at seven and an eighth, right? The blade length, though, is two and a half inches. That's what I mean. Uh, the cutting edge is also two and a half inches, making it legal in a lot of places where other knives aren't. Um, the... Uh, did I say seven and a quarter? Yeah, seven and a quarter, including the ring. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons. Just a few today. Up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. It's actually about the same overall length as the Ontario Rat Model 2. It just has a lot more presence to it, especially with the gigantic, scary, terrifying ring on the end of it. Um, it really does make it look a lot bigger. I think, honestly, it's just the, the blade-to-handle ratio. How about up against the Demco AD 20.5? There we go. How about up against, what's another knife that's similar in size? The CJRB Pyrite. Maybe the Civivi Elementum Button Lock. How about the Spyderco Para 3? That's another one that's a similar size. And let's do the bug out. The bug out's always a good size comparison. Okay, how's the action? It's uh, similar to any other Wii knife. I find Karambits often to be awkward to deploy. Um, and I know a lot of them have the unicorn horn and you can like freaking ninja it out of your pocket. And that's really cool, but it's just kind of alarming when someone just needs you to open a package of batteries or something and you just freaking Steven Seagal this thing out of your pocket and it's just very alarm. Like, yeah, you know, I, you know, you, you can say you look cool in your head, but really it's just alarming, right? You just become the memory. Like, remember that time that guy like freaking <laughs> whipped that crazy thing out of his butt? Yeah. Um, I like knives that are just a little bit less intense to deploy. Um, and this one is, but it's also really organic. I mean, everything is very familiar. The placement of the thumb studs and the way I missed it there. Stupid amateur, right? You would think at this point, after 3,600 uploads, that I had practiced enough for that never to happen. It does. Right? Even a level 100 knife wizard such as myself, sometimes, um, sometimes even we have 
trouble with performance. So don't, uh, you know, hang in there, guys. If you're having trouble, guys and gals, if you're having trouble with performance, all right, if your thumbs don't work the way that they used to, hang in there, okay? We, we, all, we all deal with this. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, it's, it's actually really nice and easy to deploy it. it. It's just, it's a Karambit that functions the way that any other, you know, premium titanium frame lock functions, right? It's made by Wii, feels like a Wii knife, but it feels, I think more importantly, it feels purposefully designed, feels intentionally designed, which is something that I appreciate, right? Um, I should say this right now, while the vast majority of people are still, well, not vast majority. I mean, what are we in here? We're in five minutes. Let's be real. 70% of the people watching this video have dropped off. But what? the people who are watching, right, you may have already gone to look up the price. And I want to, I'm, I'm going to try and say this more often. When it comes to like major OEMs like we, and there's a number of other companies, when it comes down to the final price tag, the designer doesn't get a say in that. I mean, they have an idea, right? I mean, they're, they're choosing the OEM, so they know what's going to happen. But it's not like they can say, I want you to make this and I want it to be in this price range. That price was decided by we, and so uh, believe me, I'm going to talk about the price, and I don't really like it. Um, but it's 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 we's fault for the pricing. Um, and we knives, if you're watching, I like you guys, and I think the knives that you manufacture are, are of great quality. Um, but your your pricing confuses me, and it it's full of like <laughs> weird errors when it comes to comparing other knives with similar materials, similar overall execution, right? It's just seemingly for no reason, certain knives are 50 to in some cases, $100 more than other knives, right? So the the designer I want to give credit to, this is actually a karambit. I could see, my, if I was gonna carry a karambit, I think it would actually be this one because it makes the most sense as a daily practical tool. And it feels very purposefully designed, but I, where I don't want to, you know, come down on the designer is for the price tag because that's not their fault. That would be Wii's decision, right? So anyways, yeah, it deploys well. <laughs> let's go ahead and um, <laughs> let's do a carry profile thickness up against the Spyderco Pair 3. It's just a hair thicker, but it's also contoured, which is nice. Length and height up against the PM2 and the Pair 3. Um, this guy is actually the same folded length as the Spyderco PM2, which is why, that's why I say it's a little big knife. Like it's, it's huge when it's folded up and it's really small when it's deployed. Right? <laughs> how many times, how many times has that sentence ever come out of someone else's mouth? It's, listen, it's huge when it's folded up, but when it's deployed, it's pretty lackluster. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a shower, not a grower, right? Am I allowed to say that? Am I allowed to say that on YouTube? Oh my God. What is this? Okay, let's get back to it. <laughs> it's just me. Imagine that. It's just me sitting here in my office laughing to myself, a joke that I made, right? I'm recording that you guys aren't going to see this for another couple of weeks. I literally in this moment have no audience. It's not until it goes up on YouTube do I have any sort of audience that could potentially find that funny, right? The insanity of that is, it's incomprehensible. Okay. Um, so anyways, it's, uh, it's definitely a lot bigger than the Spyderco pair of three. And it, you know, in terms of maximum height, I mean, across the board, I mean, even with the ring down here, it's still the PM2 and pair of three are still taller for sure. Um, let's go ahead and weigh it. So what are we looking at for materials here? If we can see, God, they really, let's see if we can zoom all the way up and be absolutely certain that this is in fact, CPM 20 CV. Yes, it is. It absolutely is CPM 20 CV. Oh my gosh, there we go. Sorry, the zoom on this camera here. CPM 20 CV hardened to what they always have done and will probably never change is 59 to 61. I would prefer they do 60 to 62, but they don't, you know, that they, they do their own thing. So, uh, and then we have uh, titanium. I actually really like how they do their tumbled titanium. It almost looks, in the case of the blue, it almost looks like there's a layer of frost on it. Um, it's the same thing with their bronze. Their tumbled bronze and blue actually kind of look icy, uh, which is something I appreciate. It looks nice. Um, titanium, and then um, that's pretty much it, right? 
there is there some uh, milling for weight reduction? There is, and there are spe uh, drainage holes. So if you drop it in the water and you pick it back up, then the liquid won't get trapped in there. I'm kidding. They're just holes um, for bees to live in. The weight of this knife, let's make sure we're completely on the thing, 3.88 ounces, which really isn't bad. I mean, the ratios aren't perfect, but as far as like, you know, this size of object made of titanium and steel, even with a short blade, I would have guessed over four ounces, right? Just looking at it, but no, not bad. Let's go ahead and uh, do a hardware check. I'm going to get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. Where is the indicator? There it is. Ah, I really need to replace this bit. You said that six months ago. I know, I know. I just never do it. The pivot is uh, T8. The lock bar insert screw is a T8. The pocket clip screw is a T8. And I'm going to go ahead and say these other two body screws are also T8. We does a good job of this. They use T8 and they don't overcomplicate the construction most of the time. And that's the case here. So that's that's fantastic. No issues there. Let's measure the blade stock thickness. Blade, bless it. Blade stock thickness is... Uh, 123,000, so not really, you know, not thick. All right, meat and potatoes time. This is a, you know, a very comfortable, and I mean it, it's actually really comfortable as far as like karambits go. This is very comfortable, and it's because of, you know, the position of everything. They've spread this out and not made these peaks too abrupt and too limiting. Like just, you know, it doesn't feel like a guard in a movie that's like poking that guy back in line that's like obviously not had enough food or water for a long time. And he's like, get back in line. And he's like, please, I can't wait. And he starts whipping him, right? This, the ergonomic shape of this knife is not doing that with your fingers. <laughs> Does that paint a good picture? Um, no, it's, it's actually really comfortable. And there's enough room right here where you can kind of choke up if you want to. I really wish that they would have extended the jimping out here because that's where my thumb naturally wants to go. But the pocket clip, while it is, you know, pretty long, I think they could have, like, chopped 30% of this off. It's pretty long. It is flat and it is milled, right? And it's knocked down at the edges. So, really, comfort here is pretty good. Most of the time with karambits, I'm like, yeah, I know, I got to get my pinky in there and then I, I hold the rest of it. But I can't say I've really ever had this comfortable of an experience with a karambit. A lot of it, I think, is the fact that it's, the curvature is correct. The designer, obviously... Maybe he and I have similar size, uh, similar sized hands, <laughs> similar sized hands, and um, the contour titanium, it, it feels great, right? Uh, the edges are knocked down, everything like that. There's a nice scallop right here for access to the thumbstead. Everything just feels very good, very organic. The blade is incredibly simple, and yes, it, it is kind of boring, right? The interesting part of this knife is that it is a karambit, and that it is not your typical over-the-top CSGO-looking karambit, right? Um, it's got a flat that carries out, I don't know, 65% uh, the length of the blade, a little swedge, very deep belly, comes down to a reasonably thin cutting edge, nice tip, right? It'll do it. You really, most people don't need more than this blade. I mean, a lot of us, like, you know, periodically, do I like to carry around a four inch blade? Sure. Do I need it? No. Most of the time, I could get by with a box cutter, right? I could get by with a freaking um, Milwaukee fastback. Do I want to carry that thing? No. I consider that thing to be an abomination. I won't let it near my pocket. I would, I feel like I would die of boredom one step into having a Milwaukee fastback in my pocket. A lot of people are going to get upset with me and say that I'm a snob. And to that I respond, you are absolutely correct. I'm a massive knife snob. If that wasn't apparent by this channel, the Milwaukee Fastback has no place in the kingdom that is my pocket. I take my pocket very <laughs> I can't keep it straight, man. I'm try I tried to give a whole speech. <laughs> no. We don't need that much blade. So this will work. Some people do. If you have a specialized occupation, you might need some more blade. In this case, um, you know, for, for most people, no, right? You can also front flip it, which is an interesting, they just decided like, yeah, let's go ahead and just make it a front flipper too. It works. The rest of this is really, it's pretty straightforward. I don't, the holes, they're there because it would otherwise just be plain tie and I think it would have looked okay there. I guess I kind of appreciate that they're there because it would have been a little bit boring otherwise, but you know, okay. 
Uh, the ring back here is cool. It's a ring. It will fit most fingers, right? I mean, like, uh, if you, okay. So I just found out that my ring size is an 11. So I wear an 11, right? I mean, should I pull, should I put all of my other fingers back so that, no, I'm kidding. Uh, but I'm an 11 uh, ring size. So if your hands, like, depending on, yeah, you know, how big your fingers are, if you're wondering, is my finger going to fit in that hole? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm a child. I'm a child. If you're wondering if you're going to fit, <laughs> then um, you can gauge off of the, off of my, you know, fitment here, right? Take a good, take a good look there. Okay. Uh, it's right-handed only. There's no mounting position for lefties, right? That's, that's a, that's a bummer. There should be, but there's not. Um, we have a stop pin. Actually, yo, now, yeah, it's deep in there. <laughs> Jeez, that, uh, oh, some of these are unintentional, guys. Um, the uh, open position, the locked out position, uh, the stop pin is under heavy shouldering from the blade. Um, there is no lock stick. There's no blade play up, down, left, or right. Uh, nice access to the lock bar, which is cut slightly, slightly above the show side scale. And it's got a little bit of texturing there. It's a real nice touch. There is a steel lock bar insert that doubles as the over travel stop. That's to be expected. Uh, it is reasonably smooth, consistent anyway, and there's a nice detent on it. I think a heavier detent than some people might guess. And then we have perfect centering. Honestly, kind of kind of neat, right? I mean, to, to Karamba people, I think they would look at this and go, that's insanely boring and it's wildly expensive, right? I think this is a Karambit for regular people. This is a Karambit for people who don't like Karambits. Um, and it's a really normal looking knife for people who do like Karambits, right? Um, here's the problem. It's $284. We, who is in charge of pricing these things out? And why is, why is this person so floppy, ding dong, loosey goosey with the end? Like, does he just, does he have like a, a wheel where that he spins and it's just anywhere from like, you know, there's like one slot that says reasonable and then all the other slots are 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, a hundred dollars over what would be a normal price tag. This like, seriously, this, this is like a 210, $220 knife max, maximum, uh, $284. Why? Why? That's where your special edition stuff should be. There's nothing here that screams special edition, right? Your price is way too high on this. It's kind of cool, right? It's kind of interesting. I, 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 you know, I found it a lot more interesting than I do most karambits, but the price is absurd. It's absurd. This is coming from a guy who just recently, listen, I'm not even going to say it. I just bought a wildly expensive knife and it was multiple thousands of dollars. So coming from somebody who does that, this is too much money for this. $284. No. Uh, if you really like this, though, if you really like it and you just wanted to know, like, is it quality? Does it feel good? Right. And you just really want to EDC a Karambit style knife, but you just want it to be practical. Then it's for you. Then it's for you. Anybody else? I, I wouldn't. I would recommend looking elsewhere. I mean, literally within Wii's own lineup of knives, you can find something that costs $50 less, 40 to $50 less, is made of the exact same materials and doesn't have a ring on the end of it. Right. And it's just as practical. So... There you go. Uh, I'll link it down below for you guys to make that choice for yourselves. By the way, it does come in uh, multiple aesthetic configurations. It's not just blue. They have a plain one. They got a bronze one. And they have one that's $600 in damage steel, which, as I've, as I've said many times, I do not recommend you buy anything from Weasline in damage steel because they are charging double what everybody else is charging for a damage steel blade. A damage steel blade should be roughly $150 higher than the standard, right? If they do a standard... 20 CV or M390 and they have an optional, you know, uh, damage steel blade, 150 to 170 is, is pretty reasonable, right? Um, but $300 more? No, no. It's more than, I think it's more than 300 more. It's crazy. Okay. It's going to be pretty much it today, guys. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody.
and have a great day.